Welcome to this lesson on music theory you need to know to compose. Today I will share a few tips to help you compose music if you are lost and unsure of what to do in composition. These are all music theory concepts that can serve as guidelines and give you some inspiration, but by no means are you forced to do any of these things. Here are 8 music theory tips for improving your composition. The first topic you must learn is how to create chords from letters and chord qualities. For example, if I tell you to notate a D major chord, you should be able to write every note of the chord out on the staff. The four common chord qualities are major, minor, diminished, and augmented. You need to learn how to spell any chord given its pitch letter and chord quality. You also need to become comfortable with writing and reading chords in different inversions. This is when we change the order of the notes in the chord. So for our example of D major, spelling it as D F sharp A would be root position, F sharp A D would be first inversion, and A D F sharp would be second inversion. The order of the top pitches doesn't matter, only the bass note determines the inversion. When the root of the chord is in the bass, the chord is in the root position. When the third of the chord is in the bass, the chord is in first inversion. When the fifth of the chord is in the bass, the chord is in second inversion. As far as where I got the numbers from, like root third and fifth, that is the distance or interval between the root of the chord, which would be D in this example, and the other pitches. So you simply count the distance and letters between them. So the third F sharp would be three notes higher than D, and the fifth A would be five notes higher than D. The next thing you need to understand is diatonicism. You need to become comfortable writing out the scales and chords that are available to you diatonically in any key. Start with learning the major scale, as it is the most simple mode, then learn the natural, harmonic, and melodic minor scales. You should also learn the harmonic functions of each chord in your key. For example, learn about how to use the 2 and 4 chords as predominant harmony, and the 5 chord as dominant harmony. You'll also need to learn how to write cadences, or closes to phrases of music. To keep it simple, just learn the authentic cadences, as they are the most common. These involve a motion from the 5 chord to the 1 chord. You do not need to worry about the different flavors of authentic cadences. Just learn how to close your phrases with the 5 or 5-7 chord going to the 1 chord. Learn how to modulate to closely related keys via a common ground between your original key and your target key. Pivot chords can serve as such common ground and provide a smoother modulation to other keys. For example, if we're in the key of C major and want to modulate to G major via a pivot chord, we can see that the 6 chord in C major is also present as the 2 chord in G major. To continue with the modulation, we could write a 6 in C major, going to a 5-7 of G major, and then continue on in the key of G major. Using chord names, this example would look like C major, A minor, D dominant 7th, and finally G major. Another way to modulate to keys is by using a common tone modulation. A common tone modulation involves looking at whatever harmony is currently sounding and finding a single pitch that also belongs to another key. Common tone modulations provide a nice way to modulate the keys that are a third away from our original key. For example, if we're in the key of C major, we can see that the note E belongs in the key of C major, but it also belongs to the E major key, and so we can use that pitch to get us from C major to E major. Now this one is a little tricky. Since the diminished seventh chords are entirely symmetrical, with each pitch of the chord being a third away from another, we can see that there were only three unique diminished seventh chords. Diminished sevenths are spelled according to the direction in which they resolve, and with every pitch in the diminished seventh being a third away from each other, each pitch of the diminished seventh chord can be seen as the leading tone. Enharmonic modulations open up numerous possibilities, and it's worth getting some practice with resolving diminished seventh chords in different ways by simply respelling some of the pitches. The Neapolitan sixth is a really simple chord and can provide some interesting sounds to your composition. The Neapolitan sixth is simply a name for a chord that is formally described with Roman numerals as flat 2-6. That is, for any key, you take the 2 chord, flatten it, make it major, and put it in first inversion. If you do this, you will end up with a chord that is called the Neapolitan sixth, which is usually considered to be predominant harmony, so it usually goes before a 5 or 5-7 five chord. The Neapolitan 6th is more common in minor keys, but it can be used in major keys just as easily. As the name might imply, augmented 6th chords are chords that contain an interval of an augmented 6th. Augmented 6th chords usually resolve to the 5 chord. To construct an augmented 6th chord, 
simply look at the root of your target 5 chord and write a note that is a minor second away from the root resolving up and another note that is a minor second away from the root resolving down. This works best if your chord spans at least an octave with the root doubled. Now you should have two notes. The notes you add next will depend on what type of augmented sixth chord you want to write. You could write an Italian sixth, or you just add the tonic to the chord. You could write a German sixth, where you add the tonic plus flat scale degree three. Or you could write a French sixth, where you add the tonic and scale degree two. The type of augmented sixth chord you write is completely at your discretion as to which sound you want. So there you go. I've given you a few areas of study that will help you construct a palette of sounds and techniques for your composition. You can learn these in whatever order you wish, and you can even skip some of these tips. But I recommend studying most of them, as these topics will help you gain control and confidence over your music composition. If you found this video useful, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.